Yeah, we're at Occidental in Jackson. This is Pioneer Square. Galleries. Here's the Starbucks. You knew there was going to be a Starbucks. And right down the block from the Starbucks, aside from the CenturyLink Arena, where uh, you can see the Seahawks, is a storefront mushroom farm, which I thought we would visit. Pretty amazing. Hi. You want to give me a tour on camera? Are you the guy? Yeah, that's me. All right. I'm Michael. Hi, Michael. Brian. <laughs> Good to meet you. Sure. Tell me about it. Sure. So, this is the greenhouse, as you can see, and. It was made by uh, collaboration with Olsen Kundig and Shukart Dao. Um, about 90% of this material is recycled, and um, including the boards that you're standing on. This, all, this was all cement framing that came up from the, like, the uh, Bullet Foundation um, building on 15th and Pike. So uh, that's pretty sweet. These, Nice plastic doors. Yeah. I can go right. through. Oh, I can go in? Yeah. Great. Absolutely. Fantastic. Whew. An amazing scent in here. <laughs> yes, it's, it's very organic So it's smelling. peat? Is this what I'm it, saying? It's, yes, it's peat uh, on right. the floor. Um, right. In addition to some mushrooms. Right. Um, so what's the material here? Well, in these plastic bags we have coffee grounds, sawdust, I almost said stardust, I don't know. <laughs> and grains. 60% coffee grounds, 35% sawdust, and 5% grains, which kind of helps it to come together. Um, so these bags, upright, are currently incubating. Um, they were inoculated with the mushroom spores. Which what kind of mushrooms? They're all oyster mushrooms. Uh, every one of them. Every one of them? One of two different kinds. I'm not sure. It's, it's an experiment. you got to have constants and variables. I'm not, I don't know. Right. <laughs> he lives in Bellingham. And What's his name again? Tell me his name. Gary Nabham. Nabham. And who is he? He is a food ethnobotanist. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is He knows is more a, than I do. He's a MacArthur right. genius. <laughs> so this is as much a work of art as it is a uh, piece so. of agriculture. Yeah, I would say so. He's not suggesting... A useful piece of art. But a useful piece of art yeah. that you could have, you could multiply these, I assume. You could mass market Absolutely. them and people could have mushroom farms in yeah. their own houses. I guess what I've heard is that all of the output that we will produce from this greenhouse is going to equal about 200 pounds of mushrooms. Really? So that would be a lot of mushrooms that we'll have. And at the end of this um, experiment, we'll have a community dinner where we'll be making pizza. Um, really? There is. Um, an so do I get to go to that? List. In order <laughs> okay. to go, in order to get a ticket to, for that, you participate through going to the cafes that we are getting grounds from. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, and then then you will post. You will post your order online, and um, that sounds more great. You can get more details about that. Okay, so the there's flyer. a flyer with yeah. all that information. Okay. All right. So you're spraying the peat. So this is this is spraying the peat. And what we're doing is just keeping the humidity up. And we'll, if we keep the humidity high enough, then the mushrooms will, will be happy. Kind of like in a grocery store, you know? Right. <laughs> Well, I gotta say, I don't really understand why these are all the same mushroom. I mean, oyster mushrooms are nice, but you know, why not every shelf a different mushroom? And 
see what happens, you know. And you know what kind of mushrooms I'm talking about. We're talking about the ones that only grow in cow shit. Now, how come all the ones on this side don't have cow shit in them? I don't know. The ones over here, reindeer piss. So, free idea. Somebody do this with something other than oyster mushrooms.